I told the other group that I collect World War II covers and censored mail. A lot of censored correspondence is the usual, you know, the hi mom, I'm alive from soldiers. And then the general business correspondence, you know, invoices, payments, that sort of thing. You want representative examples of the different censor tapes, which are the, you know, they're like these tapes, they're on the side of the envelope that they use to reseal the envelope once they've been censored. It gets to be kind of boring because, you know, they're just all these unremarkable addresses. So one time when I was looking through things, I came across mail that was fan mail. The particular fan mail that I first found, it was fan mail from Great Britain to the United States. I decided to use United States fan mail because then you could track down the origin of these letters through the APO numbers. Now, what is an APO? Okay, an APO is an army post office and the number appears on the postmark. So it's a sort of a modified form of a muted cancel. It doesn't show the specific place like a traditional postmark would. And usually the APOs would be assigned to a specific unit and they would follow the unit wherever it would go, you know, wherever it was on deployment or traveled, because this way it would allow the person who's attached to that military unit to provide a static address to whoever wants to correspond to them. Because otherwise, if all the time they were moving around, they would have to communicate a new address to people. So that wouldn't work out. After World War II ended, then the numerical listing of APOs were published by the Army Postal Service. And then later on, a person named S.W. Roberts transcribed all this information and made it available to be searchable on the internet on their website. And I included the link. The first example I showed is a letter to Betty Grable, which is probably the mo mo most popular pinup girl of World War II. That APO number on that letter was APO number 244. And the date it was postmarked was November 4th, 1944. So you need both the APO number and the date in order to search in this database. Doing that, you come up with a result that this letter was mailed in Saipan in the Mariana Islands. And this one is also interesting because it has in pencil notation, sent eight by 10. This soldier was successful in at least getting the pinup photograph sent to him. Hopefully he received it in good order and took it home and lived happily ever after, but <laughs> it was war time, you don't know, but at least he managed to get it sent to him. Then the second one I showed the group was this other one. It has an APO number of 45 and it's from July 23rd, 1944. And the APO return address number is different than the postmark number. Not entirely unusual. If you search for the APO 45 in the return address, it shows that this would have an origin of Rome in Italy. And the 376 has an origin location of Naples. But these kind of discrepancies aren't really unusual because in the situations with like APO, it's like army units, you know, they had to advance and fight to get to different positions. Sometimes they needed to make rather hasty retreats. You know, logistics could be sketchy and makeshift, so things didn't always jive. Another interesting thing I noted, which has tangentially related to an entirely different collecting interest than stamps, is that this 180th Infantry Company was attached to the 45th Division. And the 45th Division is known as the Thunderbird Division, but they came by that logo or name in a kind of forced and odd manner. And people who collect military patches, this would be notable to them because the Thunderbird patch came about because the original patch for the 45th Infantry Division had to be withdrawn. Originally in the 1920s, the logo for the logo on the patch for the 45th Inf Infantry Division which was an Arizona, New Mexico, Southwest area unit, 
was a swastika. It probably should have been withdrawn in 1933 due to, you know, well, the, the ultimate reason for the withdrawal was, you know, that this symbol is confusingly similar to the symbol of a foreign mm -hmm. nation, such as to confu cause confusion, confusion on the field of battle. That was the original, the reason for withdrawal of that. But they left it. They left this swastika patch in place until Great Britain, you know, declared war against Germany. And only in 1939 did they withdraw this and require that there be a new patch issued. And that's how the Thunderbird logo came out. But it, it seems crazy to me that they would have left it so long. I mean, there were political reasons already in 36 and 37, you know, that this is not, not that they should have considered replacing this patch even then. So, but no, swastika was authorized for wear on United States military uniform from like mid 1920s to up until 1939, if you were a member from that unit. And it also presents, you know, this quandary of, you know, if you wanna be a completionist collector of United States patches, well then, do you include these swastikas or not? That was just an odd tangent that developed from this whole looking through covers. And that's pretty much it. How, how do you find these? You look through dollar boxes. <laughs>